It's always a joy to open up a new series of lectures and teach you from the great Word of God. And the Bible is the greatest book in the world, of course, and it has in it the greatest truths in the world, and it's always a joy. And if you were to receive a catalog of our teachings by videotape, you would discover that we cover one, <laughs> from one end of the Bible to the other. We have literally hundreds of, of lessons, and this is a new group of lessons that we have been dealing with. Uh, they are called the Altars and Offerings Under the Most High. In these, we will be covering the beginning altars, and then with the, the patriarchs of altars, uh, a nation makes an offering and an altar unto God, and the, the, the little creatures that were offered unto God as offerings substitute, mind you, for the great offering that would come, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we will be telling you what the sin offering is, what the trespass offering is, what the peace offering is, what the wave offering is. And there's an ignorance offering, what, what the ignorance offering is. And, and then the accident offering, if you have an accident, the accident offering. And we will be showing you what the poor offering is, what the maybe offering is. It's going to be very exciting. And we are at this time uh, dealing uh, with the birth of altars and their offerings. And we have promised you that we would take you into the book of Leviticus, which describes all of the offerings of the Old Testament. Generation after generation, after Adam's sin, his posterity offered offerings upon altars. Total posterity. A posterity did, all mankind on the face of the earth. Now, in the Bible, in that unique book of Leviticus, God anointed this great man that we call Moses, that we're so well acquainted with, to describe and to write down the, the formula of all of the, of the offerings unto God and the altars upon which they were to be offered unto him. In the book of Leviticus, that the very key word of the whole book is the word holiness. You say, well, how do you know? Because it occurs 87 times. You, you see, if you catch the key word in a situation, you'll know what God's getting at. He's trying to make man a better man. He is not creating ceremony. <laughs> no. no, he is not creating liturgy. No. The key word in, in Leviticus is not how to build an altar, how to put an animal on it. The key word is holiness unto the Most High. Now, if you catch that, uh, these lessons will certainly help you. They will certainly be a blessing to you. But it is essential and necessary uh, that you get the key word. The word holiness is mentioned 87 times in the book of Leviticus alone. In Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 2, it says, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, H-O-L-Y, <laughs> holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. I like that. I've, I've visited 100 nations, more, more than 100 nations of the world. And uh, I have ministered in more than 1,000 cities in the world. That doesn't count the towns and the villages and the open airs. And, and no. I've seen the gods of the world in India. Whew. Thousands, thousands of them. I've seen thousands of Buddhist gods. I've been in one temple called the God of 10,000, the temple of 10,000 Buddhas. 10,000 different formations of Buddha that you can worship in little idols all over this enormous enormous temple. And they don't have a God of holiness anywhere. They know they don't live right. They can't live good. They know that. And so they don't have such a God. But you have a God of holiness. And he said, I want you to be holy. So these offerings were to make man holy, to get man forgiven of his sins, to get man cleansed from his unrighteousness. So the purpose that we're talking about is not ceremony. <laughs> it's not long robes and, 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 a, and a golden altar, you know? It is man making himself right with the Most High God and with man becoming a new person and a new creature by the authority and the power of the Most High God. Then we get our perspectives right and we become to understand what God means in His teachings, then you, you know how to live. And God wants you 
and he wants me to know how to live before him. We are responsible for our, uh, for our actions on the face of this earth, for our decisions. You'll have to face every one of them again when you meet, when you meet the great judge of the universe when you have passed into this next life. So God speaks in, Levit in the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, in verse 2. He says, I am, says, be you holy because I am holy. The teachings regarding the offerings to the Most High God in this most remarkable book called Leviticus are, are listed under nine divisions. So if you'll mark nine down, we'll, we'll begin with them. Under nine divisions. Uh, number one is from Leviticus, chapter 1, through, verse, through chapter 6, the first six chapters. In these first six chapters, we, we have recorded the names and the offerings unto God. The names and the offerings of what the offerings were unto God in the first six chapters. Now, this entire book deals with the altars and the sacrifices of the Most High. The entire book. I would advise you to read the whole book. Then in chapter 7, you go into your, and, and, and your second division of the nine divisions of the book of Leviticus. And here you find related uh, uh, the laws pertaining to the offerings are given. And, and so you have the laws related to the offerings given. And, and God stresses very strong exactly. You don't worship God any way you want to. You worship God according to what he has said. <laughs> and that makes a difference. And you better know that too. Some of you say, I can go to any church I want to. You better wait a minute. You better ask God about where you should go to church. Certain churches uh, give you special help. Uh, you know, you don't just go to any doctor you want to. Uh, if, if you've got kidney trouble, uh, you don't go to a mouth doctor, you know. Uh, you don't go to an eye doctor. You know, it's amazing how stupid we get in spiritual things. Some of us are real scientists and natural things. And guess the spiritual thing we become as stupid as an idiot, you know. Uh, we, we just don't think at all about what God wants us to do and what God wants us to be. But the, the purpose of our teachings is to help you to come alive on the inside and to be approved of God, for God to say, hey, you're doing all right. And that's what you want too. You know it is. You want God to say to you at the end of this journey of life, say, well done, good and faithful servant. Well, you do it by understanding the Word of God and living up to it. And so these altars and these offerings were prescribed by the Most High, written in the book, and demanded that they follow. Not deviate from, no, but to follow them precisely. They say that Colonel Sanders uh, in his uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, is very careful. You are sent the ingredients to fry that chicken by and to prepare it by. And, and that he has had people that wrote back and says, I can give you a little better recipe on this. And they are fired the same day. They get a telephone call telling them that another person is in charge uh, from now on. They don't permit you to deviate. You're not in there to fry chicken the way you want to fry it. It's already been determined how it's going to be prepared for the people. And they're going to like it that way and not your way and not your way. And so it's the same with our worship. You don't just worship any way you want to. You worship with the way God teaches you how to worship. Oh, isn't that great? Don't you want to do it God's way? Well, if you do, study the word of the Lord, and you'll know how God wants it done. And so in, in Leviticus uh, chapter 7, uh, we have related the, the laws pertaining to them. In chapters 8 and 9, we have the consecration described. And, and those are very particular chapters, you know, that you need to give a lot of attention to. But because in there you have the consecration uh, that is related to the various offerings and to the various altars. And, and so uh, you, if you don't know that, you don't know the dedication that the consecration brings about. And so we would like for you to, to you know, to give some thinking and, and some prayer to that. Uh, number four in this uh, area of nine uh, different uh, operations that we have here. Uh, describing the, the great, uh, the great uh, uh, altars and, and, the, uh, and the sacrifices under God. The, the fourth division uh, is in one chapter, chapter 10. And, and in that chapter, God gives the proper warnings. You see, God is a good God. In chapter 10, uh, you, you have the warnings that God makes. He says, now listen, if you don't do it this way, you have a problem with me. 
<laughs> That's natural. Uh, you mothers and fathers, uh, when you tell a child to do something, if you tell them to make up the bed, you don't want to find the covers down underneath the bed. You say, no, 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 I didn't tell you to make up the bed by putting the covers underneath the bed on the floor to put them on top of the bed, uh, you know. And, and you have to follow orders. If you don't, you have find displeasure in the parents. God is exactly the same. Uh, God says, now, here are the warnings to you if you don't do the things I tell you to do. So the whole of chapter 10 is made up in that manner. The fifth uh, division that we have in this uh, book of Leviticus, the fifth division, is chapters 11 through 15. 11 through 15. And in these chapters, the Holy God, the Holy God, Jehovah, uh, speaks unto the people that they are a holy people and that they are united by the power of the altars and the sacrifices. Yeah, you want to read those two or three times. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that they are unite, that the unity, that the unity between God and His people is related to the altars and the sacrifices. And you know that's true today. Our beautiful, magnificent relationship with God is through Calvary, the, the greatest altar the earth has ever known. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, the greatest sacrifice ever offered. We'll be getting into that in our later studies. And, and that brings your relationship to God. That is your relationship to God. Or you say, oh, I don't want to, I, I, I don't want, I, I don't want to. Well, what you don't want is going to get you into hell. You see, I, if you don't do the thing the way God wants it done, then you're not going to make it. I urge you to say, Lord, I'm willing to follow. And I'm willing to obey. And if you do, you'll get it. No doubt about it. There's not one human being that ever lived on the face of this earth beyond what God can do for you. You know, Judas didn't have to go to hell even though he betrayed Christ. All he had to do is say, I'm sorry, he'd have been forgiven. But he didn't. The, 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 the devil wouldn't let him. The devil all made him do a dastardly deed. Then the devil said, now take your life. You know, there's a spirit of, uh, of, 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 uh, of taking one's own life, of suicide. And that spirit uh, has spoken to every man on the face of the earth and every woman, take your life, take your life. He knows that's a shortcut to hell. Self-inflicted murder is as bad as murdering somebody else. It's still murder. You better know it. Don't matter what your philosophy class told you in your psychology class, you better go to the Bible and find out the truth because you're going to be judged not through your psychology book. You're going to be judged by the Bible. The Word of God will judge every human being before the judgment bar of God. Be sure that you've gone by it. Chapter, chapters 11 through 15, the, the God and His holy people are united. Uh, through these altars and sacrifices. Isn't that beautiful? We're united to God through Christ. The, the, he is the only one that can take us to the Father. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, you have no hope of ever getting to the Father. Through His sacrifice, He has an entrance into the Father's heart that you can accept and receive forgiveness of your sins. How magnificent it is. All right. In, in Leviticus chapters 16 and 17, we have the story of the atonement for sin described meticulously. Uh, uh, where you can uh, get the goody out of it, <laughs> get the core out of it. And, and in these two chapters, uh, 16 and, and 17, God gives you the whole glorious and remarkable picture of how you can have your sins atoned and, and justification to come to you just as if you had never sinned before. Isn't that great? And, and this, these chapters describe that. And God wants you to know that. I want to give you an I'll outlay of the chapter before we really get going with it, you see. In Leviticus uh, chapters 18 through 22, you have the spiritual relationships of God and man through the offerings that are recorded here. You have the spiritual relationships. You do this and he does that, you know. Yeah, relationships. It's good to know those relationships. Don't be ignorant about your relationships with God, the relationships God had with people in the Old Testament. He has those relationships today. They're the same relationships, only they come through the Lord Jesus Christ rather than a lamb or, or a goat or some animal offering their life for you. It comes through the great Lamb of God uh, who, became, who became the forsaken one, which the goat was taken in the wilderness and turned loose because uh, he was to bear the sins of the people. And he is the one that went into the wilderness outside the gate and bore your sins for you. And so we have the beautiful relationships that we can have with the Most High God. And these are made to us through these beautiful offerings and sacrifices that man made to him upon the altars. In Leviticus chapter 23, we have the special feast days of the year. And all of them related to offerings and sacrifices. 
All their feast days during the year were related to the offerings to God. And they're named and, and they're given to you. And then that was number eight of these divisions. And the last one, uh, number nine, in Leviticus 24 through 27, uh, the Most High in, instructs His people in pertinent worship. This is how to do it. <laughs> pertinent worship uh, is the concluding part. Uh, read the book of Leviticus. You will certainly enjoy it. We see the offerings under the Most High uh, differed one from another. And the, the way these lessons got born was a little lady said to me, would you tell me the difference in the burnt offerings and, and the peace offerings and the sin offerings, please? Oh, I said, yes, I won't only tell you, I'll tell everybody. And so I went into the study of them and prepared these studies, uh, not only for that little lady, but for you too. And in these, in these lessons, uh, uh, the, where they differ one from another, there were offerings unto God pertaining uh, to worship. Now catch that, because the burnt offering was a worship offering. And the meal offering was a worship offering. The peace offering was a worship offering. These were the offerings of a sweet savor unto God, and they brought joy to the heart of the Creator and to the created. It brought joy. And so the ABC offerings were all of a voluntary nature, and they were all in relationship to worship unto God, and they were all a sweet savor. They brought great pleasure to God. Now, there were offerings for sin, and uh, they are called the sin offering and the trespass offering. And, and so the, these are the five offerings unto God, the ABC offerings, which were the burnt offering, the meal offering, and the peace offerings. They were a sweet savor unto God, and they were done by your desire to worship the Lord. But the, the, the D and E offerings, <laughs> the last two, were offerings for forgiveness, and they were man's transgression and man's sins. And so in the ABC offerings, you brought pleasure to God, acceptance of God, fellowship with God, satisfaction to God, and the latter two offerings of which was the sin offering and the trespass offering, you came back to God from your transgression. You came out of the dark into the light. <laughs> uh, you, you came out of sadness into joy. You came out of disturbance into peace. They were the coming back into the Most High. That helps us to know uh, the offerings uh, are somewhat better, I'm sure. You will notice the rejoicing offerings were offered on the golden altar. Now, don't ever miss this. And they were offered inside the holy place, not outside. They were offered... The, 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 the offerings that were the rejoicing offerings, the ABC offerings, they were offered on the golden altar, and they were offered inside the holy place. Sin is not mentioned in those offerings. The first three sacrifices were worship offerings. Also, the first three were, if you wanted to, voluntary offerings or free will offerings. Man, in his desire to know God and to love God, presents these to God because they loved him. You didn't know that, did you? <laughs> you thought man had a stick over his head and had to offer all these things to God. And you see, the most important ones here were free will offerings. You could do it if you wanted to, if you loved him. Now, the sin offerings were different, but they were not offered on, on this altar. They were offered on the brazen altar, not the golden altar. They were offered on the brazen altar in the outer court and could be seen by all of the people. Now, now, the golden altar was on the inside, enclosed, and could not be seen except by, 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 by the priests that were offering them. But the sin offerings were offered in the outer court on the brazen altar altogether, and, the, and, and brass is always a type of sin. And the sin offerings were compulsory. If you didn't do it, you went to hell. Hey, that's different, isn't it? Or they could, they could not be forgiven of their sins. God could not forgive them if they could not say, I will accept the sin offerings and have my sins forgiven. Now you got a real look into them, didn't you? I'm, I'm sure that you did. Christ is fully represented in every one of these offerings, in every one of them. In the A offering, Christ is the total of man's offering, complete, fully, and accepted. Uh, there is no lack anywhere any place at all, no like. In the burnt offering, Christ 
satisfies the Father's requirement for, for substitutionary atonement. In the burnt offering, Christ satisfies the Father's requirement for the substitutionary offering. So the burnt offering was a type of Christ. The meal offering, Christ meets the total of man's need, of man's need, not God's need, of man's need. The human person can have no need that divine Christ cannot meet adequately. That's impossible. You cannot have a need that heaven cannot meet. You're not that big. <laughs> and, and it's the devil that says, oh, you're such a sinner, you can't get saved. You've been so bad. Ah, forget it. Uh, Paul says, I was worse than anybody around. I was the meanest man around. Look what God did for me. God loves you, and God cares for you. God will forgive you. God will cleanse you, and you better believe it. Don't believe anything the devil tells you. The Bible says he's a liar from the beginning, and you're not believing the truth. Now, the peace offering brings Christ, brings mankind into communion and fellowship with the Most High. In the sin offering, Christ meets the total requirements of blood sacrifice for the full forgiveness of all sin. That's in the sin offering. In the trespass offering, now there are only five, we've gotten to the trespass offering, Christ makes the restitution to the Father. In the trespass offering, Christ makes the restitution to the Father for man's transgression. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that glorious? So the total offerings of the Old Testament, they present a vivid and a living picture of the one that you know as our Lord Jesus Christ our Savior from all of our sins, our glorious and marvelous one who went into the Garden of Eden, who went up to Golgotha, and who paid the supreme sacrifice that he might be the fulfillment of all five of the offerings that were offered unto the Most High in the Old Testament. So all five of these offerings, they, they, they differ, and they bring you different views of Christ. They give you different things that Christ can do for you and different things, obligations to you, and obligations to Christ to perform for you. So putting Christ in them all, we create the great comprehensive view of the majesty of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. You have to get them all together to see Him. It, it took all of them to bring the, the consummate picture of the Master, so you can see Him totally and fully in the burnt offering, the meal offering, the peace offering, the sin offering, and the trespass offering. In all of them together, Christ became the fullest measure of the altar and of the sacrifice of the Most High in that of the Old Testament. How beautiful, how magnificent it is. And so, and the divine offerings offered up unto God open the conscience of man to the wrongness of his transgression. That's what they did. They taught man what is due to God and the condition for which he offers his offerings. You see, it taught him what he was doing and how he was to do it. In Psalm 50 and verse 5, it says, Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me, with me by sacrifice. Made a covenant with God by sacrifice. That's Psalm uh, 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 chapter five, uh, Psalm 50 and, and, and verse 5. Look what verse 14 says. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High God. Then look at verse 15. And then call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? In Psalm 76 and 11 it says, Vow and pay unto the Lord your God. Let all that be around about him bring presents unto him that they might be feared, that he might be feared. In Ecclesiastes 5 and 4, And when thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools, but pay that which thou hast vowed unto God. The offerings of the Old Testament had to do with relationships with God that we call covenants or vows. And God says, make your vows. And especially those that are related to, uh, uh, th that are related to sacrifice. Make those vows unto me. And then he says, then, uh, when you're in trouble, when the time of trouble comes, look up unto me, and I will deliver you out of all of your troubles. I am a personal witness to the majesty of God in that matter, in that when I come to a day of trouble and an hour of trouble and to an hour of sorrow, I can look back and say, God, I have given you my total life. I have given you all that I am, and I can expect you to deliver me in my day of trouble. And I have a lot of record behind me saying that he has been faithful. He is a faithful God. We hope that you have enjoyed uh, today's lesson very much. And we're digging deep into this now, and we want you to dig right in there with us.
because we will come to our next lesson the next time we come to you, and we will bring you further into the meanings of the great truths of God represented in the altars and the sacrifices of the Old Testament, and how your Lord and your Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, became the perfection of all those offerings, and how He satisfied the heart of God, not every year, but once and for all He made it, and that you're welcome to it today, and that God is still not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to everlasting life. You are not destined for hell. You're destined for heaven if you will accept it. Father, bless my friend. Please do. Wherever he or she is sitting right now, just touch them deep where they can't get away from it. I believe you to do it. And as you give your heart to God, write and tell me about it, please. I want to know about it. I must know about it, please. My heart is moved deep within me, and I must know about it. And I urge you to please go down and write it and say, I've given my heart to Jesus. Then go to a good church, a good church that loves the Bible and preaches the Bible. Be baptized. Ask them if there's something you can do, even if you have to sweep the floor. They might give you a Sunday school class. You can start teaching others about the great, the, the great sacrifice of Calvary and the greatest altar man has ever known, Golgotha.